Things people say about the Jeep Gladiator that really hack me off. It's a Jeep, right? Well, good morning, everybody. How are you today? Pretty good here, and I'm feeling a little feisty today, right? I wanted to go over some things that people say about the Jeep Gladiator that really hack me off, you know, that really get the blood pressure flowing, you know? Every time I hear these things, and they always premise these with, well, it's a Jeep. Well, no kidding, it is a Jeep, right? Number one, don't worry about scratches or dents. It's a Jeep. You know, take it out off-roading, go through the brush. If you're in a parking lot and somebody opens their door into it, or if Uncle Eddie is leaning up against it and scratches it with those little rivets on the back of their jeans, it's no big deal. It's just a Jeep. Well, that's a bunch of BS, you know. When I go out and pay 40 or 50 grand for a vehicle, I got news for you. It's not just a Jeep. It's my pride and joy. I want to keep it nice. I don't care if it says Jeep on it or Ferrari. It means the same to me. Number two, you can drive it through anything to some extent. I mean, it is meant to be driven off-road, right? To go through harsher conditions than just the mall parking lots. But people that think that because it's a Jeep, it can do anything and, and it should be covered. Warranty is especially crazy with this, right? That you should be able to take your Jeep out, do all kinds of crazy things with it. And if something does go wrong, it should be covered. You know, there's a story out, I did a video on it about somebody who sounds like flooded their Jeep and they're all hacked off because the dealership or the, the, the manufacturer rather, is not covering it. You know, there are limitations. You have to use common sense, right? I mean, it is a Jeep. It's not a submarine. Next up, you have to mod it to make it better. What? Now, first of all, let me be clear. I love mods and stuff, and I do think it makes it look better. But the Jeep out of the box is perfectly capable, right? You don't need to do anything for most environments. Again, it doesn't come out of the box set up to drive up straight rocky cliffs or anything, right? That's a little bit to the extreme, and I can guarantee you that if you try to drive it up one of those and it flips over backwards or sideways or whatever, you're probably not gonna be covered. You have to use a little bit of common sense, you know? But you don't have to mod it to make it better. It's perfect just the way it is. Very capable, can handle, I would say, almost any normal situation, you know, snow, dirt, mud. Yeah, you're not gonna drive it through a eight foot deep mud hole that's filled with water. Nothing's gonna go through that unless you're driving a tank, right? It is a Jeep. Next up, mods make it worth more at trade. I love this and it drives me insane when I hear it, right? For some reason, people think that if you get your brand new Jeep Gladiator, mod the heck out of it, and then for some crazy reason, and I'll never understand this, six months later, you decide you're gonna trade it in. But they're upset. They take it to the dealership and they claim that the dealership is doing them wrong, ripping them off somehow, because they put all this money into their Jeep, right? 10, 20 grand, whatever it is. And they think that their $50,000 Jeep, you know, or whatever they paid for it, should now be worth 70. But you see, what they don't understand is while you may have loved that Jeep and it may be set up the way that you wanted it, that's the problem. It's set up for you. Dealerships, they want everything to be bland, cookie cutter, right? Because that appeals to more people. That gives them a bigger group of customers that would be interested in buying that Jeep. Now, if you mod the heck out of it, obviously you're shrinking their audience, right? Their sales group, the number of customers that might be interested in your Jeep. So it's gonna take them longer to sell if they ever sell it. They may even have to discount it because the next guy didn't care for those pink fender flares you put on, right? They might even have to spend some money to bring that thing back to stock. So they have to take that into account when they're valuing the Jeep, right? So, for example, let's say that they started a baseline. Your Jeep is worth X. I don't know, whatever your year and your condition is worth, but you've got a bunch of mods and things on it that they have to remove and potentially replace with OEM parts. 
There is a cost to that. It's pretty simple, isn't it? They have to bring it back to stock to be able to sell it. I mean, it makes sense to me, right? It is not worth more money at trade. Now, there are those out there who say, yeah, I did all this and I, I got all my money out of it. And you can do that. If you sell it privately and you happen to find a person that values what you've done as much as you did. That's the only way you're going to get the money that you put into mods out of your Jeep Gladiator. And you might have to get lucky. Next up, if you don't beat the heck out of it, you're not a real Jeep owner. You should sell it and buy a Prius. You know, I've seen this and heard this many times, maybe not the Prius part, but you should sell it and buy a car or a sports car. You know, I get that with the Tacoma back here because I often talk about it being underpowered. And it is underpowered, right? But because I want more power, people tell me that I'm not a real truck guy, I should sell this and I should get myself a sports car. Well, you see, there's one problem with that. I love the Toyota Tacoma, I love the Jeep Gladiator, and I didn't want a car. I just want a truck that has a little bit more oomph, right? Now, this beating the crap out of it stuff, you know, again, it's a forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar $60,000 vehicle, right? Who in their right mind goes out, drops that kind of money, unless you're a gazillionaire, you know, and then maybe 60000 is equivalent to 60 bucks to you. I don't know. And then I get it, you know, but otherwise us normal people that go out and spend that kind of money on a vehicle aren't going to take it out and ruin it. And you know, the reason I think that is because there's a lot of people that feel the same way that I do. They agree with me, right? They wouldn't take their vehicle out. They'd love to do that because let's face it, it would be fun. I'll never deny that. It would be fun to go out and just beat the crap out of it, right? But they know that they've got that kind of money in it themselves. So they want to live vicariously through someone else, right? And they can do that if you agree to take your sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 Jeep Gladiator out and just beat the crap out of it. It gives them a little sense of thrill, I guess, which there's nothing wrong with that. I, I can't say that I disagree. It's interesting to watch somebody who's got that kind of an investment in a vehicle go out and just beat the crap out of it, you know? And it kind of makes you feel better that you didn't make that mistake. So as soon as you see, and I see these comments, you know, for people who do that, you know, after they do it, even though they were so eager to have them do it, then they sit back and they start judging. Well, you should have known it wouldn't do that. What are you trying to do? You just blew $60,000. You're an idiot. It's just so funny to watch the comments when you actually do come across people that do it. And there are, there's tons of videos out there on the web uh, of people going out, destroying their vehicles, I guess, hoping to gain instant internet fame. I hope it works because if it didn't, now they've got a big bill to pay. I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to get on here, kind of talk about that a little bit. You know, some of the things that I hear about the Jeep Gladiator that really hack me off, right? And they always seem to start off with, it's a Jeep. Well, no kidding. Anyway, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Do you worry about any of these things or do you just take your Jeep out and beat the crap out of it? I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, if you're interested, check out my other channel. It is Rob Motive, all about my 2020 Toyota Tacoma. I also have a third channel now. It's called Rob Motive Civic. Um, it just has older videos at the moment about some Civics Civic Type R um, that I've had in the past. I am going to be adding some new content to that channel, but if you'd like a laugh at a very green Rob Motive, check that out. One more thing, if you would mind, click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos and you're subscribed to the channel. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.